I am not originally from the Bay Area. I come from Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I'm 45 years old, so I was uh, reading the comics in the newspaper uh, in the 70s and in, in the 80s. Did and you say Des Moines, Iowa? Yeah, from Des Moines, Iowa. Did we made in Des Moines, Iowa? No, I did not make it in Des Moines, Iowa. I wasn't able, I wasn't able to, to meet you, but I remember you being nearby because the Des Moines Register carried your paper. That was, yeah. that was your, your strip. That was my local paper. Uh, but I read a lot of comics, like comic books, and a lot of newspaper comics when I was a kid. But no matter how much I loved the comics, I never felt like I could be a part of the comics. Because I could never be Thor, I could never be Spider-Man, I could never be Bruce Wayne. It just wasn't going to ever happen. I could look at them and admire them. They could be the heroes, but I was only a spectator. But uh, with Maury's work, I actually was able to see people that I knew and hear voices that I recognized. And for once, I was actually able to be in the comics. I could see myself as part of that conversation. And I learned from that that I had a place other than just being a spectator to everything. I actually had a part of the artistic world. And that, that was the first thing that it really gave to me. The second thing that it really gave to me was when I first came across the Soul Corner. You know, the Soul Corner was the educational section of his Sunday strip. Now, back in the 70s, we had just started, you know, uh, Black History Month, but outside of Black History Month, especially in Des Moines, Iowa, you never learned anything about black history. Uh, and even on Black History Month, it was started with Harriet Tubman, then Jesse Owens, then Martin Luther King. It was just, that was what you got. But the Soul Corner gave me the opportunity to see black history all year round. I could learn things that I never, I, people had never heard of. I, I, I could, you know, I could, I could learn what they did uh, in a short, quick, and uh, a nice sampling that just that taught me that I was part of history. And that's the other thing that really gave, gave me that, that place in American history. On top of that, just being gorgeous, the, the design of this work stood out, uh, and it, it taught me that comics had the ability to entertain, but also had the ability to teach. I could learn, you could learn something through that medium, that it wasn't just about the, the joke. There was something, a deeper message could be communicated. Now, before I pass on to, to age, I, I was able to talk to a lot of other uh, artists about coming, and um, other, others weren't able to make it, but I, I spoke to a, a local artist named Jimmy Robinson. He couldn't make it today, and he wanted me to read something. He says, my name is Jimmy Robinson, I'm 50 years old, I've lived in Oakland all my life. When I was eight years old, I was fortunate enough to attend a magnet school, school program called Mosswood Arts. It was an elementary school for creative young children sponsored by the Oakland Unified School District. Maury Turner may not remember me, or even the small building with only 60 kids in the entire school body. He came to our school presenting his art career as a model to youth in Oakland. We were just kids. And kids joke and play around and think life can go on forever. But I do recall Mr. Turner coming to our school that day, just as I recall the other artists who the teacher presented to us on other days. I may not recall the other artists who talked talk to us or their exact words spoken, but I do remember this. I was a young, impressionable black kid from West Oakland's Oak, uh, Acorn Projects, and Maury Turner was the only black artist who came to our school. That did stay with me. It stayed with me because I was able to see myself. I was able to make a connection. I was able to imagine that I can also be an artist, that art was open to anyone, any race, and any gender. And we see that still today in Mr. Turner's We Pals, in Mr. Turner's love for children, and Mr. Turner's investment in education. I wish I could deliver these words in person today. However, I believe Mr. Turner will understand since I'm currently out of state at a comic book convention. <laughs> Not as a fan, but as a professional. You see, nowadays I work at home making comic books for a living. My books are printed in the third largest comic publisher in America, and my work is sold across the world in multiple languages. I traveled the country to conventions, stores, and schools as a guest speaker, just like Mr. Turner did when I was a child. My success is a mere ripple of the legacy that Mr. Turner has created. For that and more, I do honor him on this day. God bless. <laughs> My name is Jamil Hill, and I am a writer, artist, and editor-in-chief of National Press Comics, based here in Oakland, California. Uh, I was born and raised here in Oakland, although not a pilot or a pilot. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it's a better, uh, I don't know, it changes kind of, can't be angry. Uh, but uh, I was uh, enamored with comics and reading very, very early. I was uh, blessed to have a family that, that pushed me to read, pushed me to learn. So uh, I would 
occupy myself being an only child in my books. That's what I would read. And comics were easy. They were, what, 60 cents back then. I'm 36 now. He paid 25. I paid 60. <laughs> but uh, I love my comics. But like Jerry said, uh, it was very hard sometimes to place yourself in the story. Uh, you read Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is the everyman. You know, people always say that Superman's who you try to be, Batman's who you want to be, but Spider-Man is really who you are. He's a, he's a loser. He has his problems. You know, like, and although you can identify with his problems, sometimes it's very hard to place yourself in his shoes when you deal uh, with racial politics in America. It, it can be tough to identify with people of different cultures. Um, and likewise, that was for me. So if you had found a eight-year-old me and said, hey, do you like comics? I could have told you for hours how much I love comics. If you had told the eight-year-old me, hey, would you like to create comics? I'd probably give you a blank, skip, blank stare. It would have never occurred to me that I could create what I was reading until, uh, I think it was about 1987, I was at Howard, Howard Elementary, uh, and Mr. Turner came to visit. And I'll never forget it because it was unusual in that uh, the principal, Ms. Brooks, took everyone out of class and brought us into the auditorium, the cafeteria, and there was Mr. Turner. And I was like, who's this guy? I, I had no idea who this guy was, but I could feel that it was an important thing because this, everything had been shut down. I was out of class to speak to him, and he talked about cartoons. And I fully expected like a, a D.A.R.E. program or something. It was something that I really, really loved. And once I was able to connect Mr. Turner to that Wee Pow strip that I had been tearing up my mom's fingers every day to read, uh, it was amazing to me. It, I, won't, I won't act like there was an epiphany, but it did for, for one split second say, hey, I could be like him. I could create this stuff I like. And by the next year, when he came to visit again, I was ruining all my blind paper by drawing comics <laughs> instead of my homework during the class. <laughs> I got in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it turned my little obsession to my passion. And now I'm able to bring in money and support my daughter with what I create. And it's, it's really cool. So I just want to say thank you for opening up my eyes and telling me I had to do what you create. Mal. That didn't happen. So, my name is Adrian Age Scott, and I'm a Bay Area cartoonist. But not just a, uh, another cartoonist, I would think, but I'm the hip hop guy in comic books. Like, I've been standing for representing, and my whole spiel is hip hop in comic books. I've been doing my comic book, Wanna Feel. I can show you the title too. <laughs> I've been doing the comic book One and Feel for now over 20 years, and I have the first and longest running hip hop comic book ever. Mm -hmm. I've been called like the Stan Lee of hip hop. <laughs> I've been doing my thing. But it all kind of started from meeting Moy Turner. <laughs> As a kid going to St. Anthony's, you guys have to excuse me because I love this man. Seriously. Um, I've done this in my career about seven times. Me, Maury Turner, just has shared the stage about seven times in my career as I've introduced Maury to kids at Westlake, as I've introduced Maury at kids in the comic book convention, that was a couple months ago, right, Roy? Yeah, yeah, Sacramento. Yeah. Like, so, um, we got another one coming Saturday, next Saturday. Yes, sir. Yes, you know I got you back. <laughs> um, I say between Morris Turner and Sergio Aragonis, those are the two that kind of make me. But me being the hip hop guy, because I stand for hip hop, how can I pay? homage to my man without spinning a rhyme for you guys. <laughs> Listen to this rhyme that's backed by me, the dude that you call the AGE. Born here to represent for the great Maurice, born December 11th, 1923. 
So a Bay Area legend like Mike D.R.E. So check how I rep on one of the more really. Born and raised in West Oakland before he was great, as a kid, his mom and pops installed in him the faith to pursue his dreams. As a great artist, he started drawing in the fifth grade. In World War II, he drew for the soldiers, worked as a police clerk in 64, that was over. I love Mr. Turner, I think he's the bomb, the only cartoonist to draw in Vietnam. In 65, he noticed the majority of comic strips out there had no minorities, so his mentor, Charles Schultz, of the Peanuts fame, told Mr. Turner to make one Three Pals would be its name. The first comic strip in the United States to be created with a bunch of kids of all different faiths. Mr. Turner is the first nationally syndicated African-American cartoonist, and I'm glad that he made it. Matter of fact, I feel related, like I, if I'm his son. Maury Turner has taught me so much. He's who I'm learning from. So I hope I, you like my story of how I want to be just like Maury. You guys have to excuse me because he really, it, it chokes me up. Mr. Turner, I've done this so many times with you, I don't know, like, you know I love you. You know I love you. you know. And if, if it wasn't for Mr. Turner, I don't think I would be here. And my job as a cartoonist, when he came to my school, it, and I looked at his eyes, and he's like, wow, I could be this guy. I want to do that for the kids. Mr. Turner, like I said, I've done this so many times with you, it, it's no big deal with you, you know, doing this with you. Like, I love you. Thank you for the honors, you know. Like you, you 8% of blood, not a you. Here, you blood. I said, what? He said, he said, middle nine. And six, you know, it takes, by the time you finish the drawing, it takes six, six weeks to the paper. Well, six weeks later, here was this comic with the drawer at the piano. And Lucy comes in and he said, did you, did you know that Beethoven was black? <laughs> and Schroeder says, you mean all these years I've been playing slow music? <laughs>